you know, I'm, I've been on that Delano Banton game. I don't know if you guys have noticed. I know there's a lot of talk about the Mavs and Luca and the national spotlight on Caitlin and uh, Don Staley. WrestleMania happened, but I feel like people aren't really talking enough about Delano Banton and how he might be an MVP candidate. But that's neither here nor there. Hey, Trey, welcome back to New York. You've been all over the place. I you were at McDonald's All American. I was. Um, you were you, nice hat. I love it. I love it. I'm loving the hat. Um, you you went up to the Count the Dings Bomb Live Show, which yeah. was uh, in Toronto um, at the Soho House, and you're rocking the special Count the Dings hoodie. Let's see this. Who is? Uh, that's not the WNBA logo. What what is that? It is who <gasps> he, but I, I mean, I, I mean, <laughs> he, but I, no, I don't shoot like that and it's on the internet. So maze, uh, are people going to be able to purchase this, this hoodie at some point? Yeah. The orange one is coming up as a, a feature on the merch store. We're going to get that going. I think hopefully this week you'll be able to check that out. But yes, the busted jump shot hoodie lives on. We will never forget. I mean, mm. but my favorite was when the word was spreading to the people about, you know, get ready. You might have an orange hoodie in your mailbox sometime soon. One of Jerv's homies showed that he had already made his own version <laughs> oh, yeah, of a mean yeah. jump shot shirt. <laughs> and he went straight up just the photo of the of the video. No drawing, no logo, just the photo of a mean with his busted jumper. So the people are ready for it, clearly. Yeah, there's a lot of demand here. We're trying to keep up with the supply. Plenty of demand. Trey said, uh, <laughs> didn't you say the bootleg and the bootleg? Yeah, so uh, <laughs> I, won't, I won't mention his name. But yes, we're there's already bootlegs out there. Um, <laughs> and I think that's pretty cool. That's a testament to like how big that moment was. And mm. also... Um, how how much people rock with a mean. And if this was anyone else, I don't think we would be able to make a joke or drop merch about it. So um hats off to Amin um being a team player and also um playing into it. I think a lot of people should take um notes in order to how to handle um internet embarrassment, especially being like the the topic of the day in such a a, a massive space. He he did a he was on the House of Strauss podcast over the weekend. I mean, was and uh, Ethan called it converting energy, which is so perfect. Mm -hmm. He transferred the energy from negative energy into positive in ways that makes him only stronger. That people are like, oh, I can't, I can't see, can't wait to see how Amin tries to survive this one, and suddenly Amin flips it on him and completely owns all of it um and that's a mean man and ethan was just sitting there being like I, I don't think i could do that i don't think i could embrace the hate and the negativity and the clowning um and he and i mean just has a way to get stronger so trey it's a skill it's a skill in this day and age the modern era to be able to take any sort of heat and literally transferring it into your own heat you know I mean, your everything's own power a, everything's a skill man even when you're a loser you're a winner it's a weird time we're in, but I'm all for it. If, it's, if, if I'm on, if, if if our guys are on that side, yeah. yeah. So tell me about your uh, your your trips, man. Um, man, shout out to the team, man. They they got there a day before me in Houston, and um, you know, put boots to ground and and got everything kind of up and running. Um, I was a little bit less removed this year, um, and had a lesser role. I was I showed up as a basketball influencer brought in by McDonald's, but I'm also still part of the agency. So it was interesting to be uh, talent, but also working. Mm -hmm. So um, I came up with a couple creatives, which, you know, um, the certain clearance passes allowed me to have certain access to certain players whenever I wanted. So, I mean, I thought that was pretty cool. Like, um, you know, I, I'm not sure if you've seen the video of myself having uh, playing a game of pig with McKinley Randolph, who's Zach Randolph's daughter and Cooper Flag, um, and that's a challenge in itself, right? Being vulnerable mm -hmm. enough to be out there and challenge mm -hmm. 
two of the game's best. Um, it's why LeBron team. won't do the dunk contest, right? It's there's no upside. It's all downside. It's all downside, right? So um, the idea that I got a chance, you know, and all Americans feel like, why would I lose to this guy? Um, and they don't know me. And I, it was it was interesting because we were walking around asking some of the all Americans could they beat me in a you know in a shooting contest <laughs> or a game of pig and. I would say a good 45% said no. And like is, they didn't know who the I was. Skill? Is, I don't like, I don't know. Pig I think and was, horse, is that is that a, a bygone era? Is that are I don't we losing think recipes? That, I don't I don't think I just think they're they're wise enough to not underestimate their opponent. Or mm -hmm. not judging a book by its cover. Because even to get Cooper Flag involved, right? I spent majority of the six days before we even played. Uh, talking shit to him. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like just trying to get under his skin to see where he was and for him mm -hmm. to know who I was. So he got in Saturday instead of Friday. Everybody else was there Friday. So I'm like, my, number one, my ass. Like, you're not the best player. You know what I mean? It's just like just 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 really poking at him. And I was like, you can't beat me in pig. I should yeah. be better than you. You know what I mean? Just kind of stand. But it'd be like little shit where it's like, he's just trying to eat and I'm just popping up, just saying shit. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, and they had like a preliminary round where you had to make a dunk or do a specific dunk to be in the dunk contest or you had to shoot a couple of threes and qualify to be a three-point contestant. And he's like, I'm not doing either of the events. So I'm like, oh, so you got time to play me a pig. And he said, man, let's go. And yeah. that's how it happened. You know what I mean? And then also McKinley Randolph, she just, she had the confidence in general. You know what I mean? She was just like, yo, you can't beat me, bro. Like, quit playing. And I switched balls for her. Also, mm -hmm. these kids mm -hmm. both came out of uh, practice. They had two-hour practice in front of NBA scouts. And I'm like... He's did you, did you have to go through practice, Trey? No. I sat there cold. Tom, I literally got up with my camera crew like, hey, we got to get this now. Mm -hmm. So they're warm. And, uh, you're cold. So even yeah, though they might be a little... yeah. Wow. So as the video, Cooper says, man, he started off a little slow. He caught me off guard because he can't shoot. <laughs> Due to editing <laughs> processing, and you also have to think about attention span. This video cannot be longer than a minute. It can't. Mm -hmm. It just can't. Like nobody's about to sit through it. It was PI for the longest between us because he was picking certain shots that he knew would go in. An elbow. I'm not going to miss an elbow. I'm not going to miss too many elbows. I so missed the free throw. Stuck on too many makes. You guys are going back and yeah. forth making and, it. And that's not good for content purposes. But then I got gassed. I, I said it in the video. I'm like, I'm fucking tired. Like, I don't do this no more. He took me out yeah. to the three point NBA line. I don't really have a cartilage to the knees or the, any of that stuff to like really shoot how I would like to shoot it comfortably. And we shot out there for like, a good 30 minutes. That's how long yeah. that game before he actually beat me. Like, so that's why I was like, it's one thing to be like, all right, I shot for like seven minutes and he beat me. And I'm like, oh, I'm tired. No, we were mm -hmm. out there shooting to a mm -hmm. point where I'm sweating. I'm like, I'm talking trash. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's why it was getting there. Um, and then I had to play McKinley right after. And she's like, give me the girls ball. So I had to take a step back from everywhere I was shooting and then from there, just try to make sure I don't shoot it too hard because then I'll also yep. become a mean, a mean in that scenario where it's like, mm -hmm. damn, he missed bad or, you know what I mean? Like, do you have a shot, like a, a, a pet shot in horse and pig? Like a go-to um, shot? Probably some glass stuff. Mm. 15, like a tough glass, maybe a free throw line glass shot or something like where I know how to play the math of it. And I'm just yeah. older, and these are some shots that these kids haven't Finesse. discovered or used. Um, so yeah, I could I could do certain shots, yeah. But I don't. I wasn't thinking of it like, oh, let's do trick shots. I just, in order to keep them engaged, it had to be normal jump shots because they didn't want to like. The original idea was to, for them to shoot with their offhand. I'm like, of course I'm gonna win, but mm. I wanted to shoot with my offhand because I could shoot with my left, and mm. I was like. I'm gonna, I'm gonna Anthony, I'm gonna Anthony Edwards this joint. So like, mm. don't do it, Trey. Mm. If I would have so beat you, Cooper, I would have played McKinley with my left. That was I saw plan. something. I saw something that was really cool. Trey was uh, after I think a dunk contest mm -hmm. finish. They ate fries. Like, yes. 
the McDonald's fries. Can can you talk to me about this? This is amazing. So we had like a sit down, you know, one of those serious moments where you sit in a sit in a chair and you talk to the camera and you're like, who you think are gonna win the uh, dunk contest? The confessionals. So the yeah. confessionals, right? And everybody's like, Jalil Batia. Have you ever seen him? Like, but he's known as a three point threat. You know what I'm saying? Like he's a three yeah. point shooter that can also dunk. He doesn't yeah, know it's Trey vertical. Murphy, Anthony Simons, these guys who are shooters but can fly. Yeah. Maybe even maybe Milwaukee Ray, Ray Allen, right? Because he's tall mm. too. This is another thing. His kid is like 6'5", 6'4", 6'5", right? So he's going to University of Miami. So everybody kept saying his name. Now, Ace Bailey obviously is more of a power dunker. He's seen T-Mac earlier because T-Mac is a judge. And T-Mac's like, I want to see some stuff, guys. And like, he's like, oh, T-Mac here. Like, I got to bring out my best stuff. That's cool. And the stage is big, man. So it's like, although you think like, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. The timing's got to be right. You're on a clock. It just didn't thing. And I always, I was telling them, I'm like, yo, just qualify. Make your first dunk. Do not make it a first, like a lob to yourself. It doesn't work that way. You lose because you're trying to go between the legs. The ball goes over there. Somebody has to throw you the ball. You have to regather yourself. You got to hype up the crowd to get the dunk. Just make a dunk. So prior to before the dunk contest, uh, I see Jalil B- Bathia in the, in, the, um, in the hallway with the rest of the players. And I say, yo, everybody's predicting you to win. I think you're going to win. But to make this a bigger moment, you have to have a prop. If I tossed you a cheeseburger, would you eat it? <laughs> and he like, dang, I didn't think about it. He's like, yo, that is kind of fire. I was like, or I can get fries. Now, McDonald's uh. had a fries truck already out serving the fans. The so it was already like, red McDonald's fries cup, right? Yeah. So I'm sitting there and I'm like, now we got to get clearance from ESPN because we're on their time. And Product they're like, well, we yeah. got branding everywhere. So we're good. So now I have to double confirm like, hey, are you going to really eat these fries after you're dunk? <laughs> And he's kind of still on the fence about it. You know what I mean? Like he, he still ain't yeah. bought in. He's like, maybe my last round, maybe my last round. So I'm hanging around. I'm just kind of just like trying not to be on camera, but like talking to him here and there. Cause you know, they would do the close up of the guy sitting there in the chair. I'm like, all right, let them go by. And then I go, all right, so you're going to do it. He's like, yo, my second dunk, go under the, under the basket. So I'm like, Brad, Brad Shokin's the guy on the first slide. Who's from Golan. He's the uh, PR does for McDonald's all American. Brings all the uh, complex and all those people in to do the media and stuff. I said, Brad, I need hot fries now. <laughs> Please go get them. So then there's an image of me, Cassie Athena caught, of me with the bag. Now I'm touching the bag, making sure the fries are hot, like warm. Yeah. Like Got I, said, I need piping hot because Quality control. Yeah, we have to wait. Like for one, we have to wait. He's a dunk behind this when I have to give it to him. And then secondly, not too hot to burn his mouth because I have to give it to him. Like if I handed the bag to him, him ruffling through it, the camera pans off. We missed that moment. It's just too much. So I'm like, I got to take it out at the particular time. And then I got to find when there's a time where the camera's there and also me just kind of shoving it on him like here and just getting out of there. So it won't be me. It's just my hand. Like it's not about me. It's about stealing this moment within Mm. a moment. So right. right. He gets pure, John Bow, who's not setting him up. Who, yeah, who's not related to Manu Bow. John Bow just happens to be wearing eleven. You know, seven two. Cool. There we go. So walking you through this moment, you want to hear? He's jumping. He actually fucking does it. Oh, everybody! Yeah. The kids are right there. I'm like, boom! I hand it off. <laughs> I want to like push it. And get out of the way. Just push it into his <laughs> chest. Because still, it's there. Are you are you the cameraman? You're not cameraman right here, I'm not are you? the cameraman. Okay. Someone uh, else is filming this. So my, you're, my you're colli- going... Yeah. My colleague is filming this. Because I, I yeah. can't. I can't. The camera would have been everywhere trying to do that. I missed mm-hmm. the moment. So my hand's there. I'm like... Like making the eyes like here. <laughs> Don't forget what we've agreed mm-hmm. on. It would look, it would look really bad for me to like somebody's not, like the commentator, like, is someone trying to give him fries and he doesn't the take fries them? Fries are like, just hovering in the air right now. Yeah. And no one is and taking the fries. 
because I was eating some of the fries before I handed it off. So yeah, it like, you did. Yeah, you, you got yeah, to you gotta make sure. You got to yeah. make sure it's not too hot. Yeah. Yeah. So the I handed it off. I, like here, there you go. And I move. And now I allow him to have his moment with the guys. Everybody surrounded. Everybody got their phone out. They're losing it. He goes back. He's still eating the fries. And he's like, they're good. And I'm like, yes. <laughs> like you know what I mean like yes right yeah. so it's a quiet win everybody you stuck the landing everybody still doesn't have a clue what just what happened because McDonald's didn't know I was doing this my team didn't know I was doing this mm. I just stole a moment in this particular thing of like how can we as Wyden and Kennedy Bodega show up in a moment within a moment without doing too much mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and taking advantage of the situation. And that's advertising. Like if I'm 10 years ago, I see that I'm going to go get some fries because I think I can jump with like after him. Like I'm, it just immediately makes me want some fries. I don't know what that impacted, but it went viral because other outlets said, Oh, he even ate fries. And it was like, boom. I don't think he realizes that he's going to be known as the fry guy, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Or the, like down the line that he used a prop and more people are going to be using props. Like, you know, um, some people jumped over Grimace before, some people jumped over Ronald, like, but like actual food product was like, mm -hmm. cool. It's like the, uh, it was the Indy 500 where they drink a gallon of milk where mm -hmm. they, they, they pour the milk. Yep. Yeah. That's, it, it's kind of a select, uh, the, the Gatorade, but, um, this is the the McDonald's tray version. This yeah. is uh, iconic. Um, so I was thinking about this, how like Steve Jobs or someone at Apple figured out that the Apple logo has to be backwards on your laptop mm -hmm. so that when you flip it up, it's actually facing, uh, facing, the right other, facing the right way. Yeah. So when you're handing him the cup, where the McDonald's logo... Were you thinking at all like, hey, I want to get the McDonald's logo in here? It doesn't matter because no. it's the red cup. It's the Everybody red cup. knows it's the same color. They know it's fries. They know it's the McDonald's game. Why would they serve other mm -hmm. fries elsewhere? I don't have to. Like, that's like saying the OG pod. You see us three. You know. Right? We don't have to have over branding everywhere. We don't have to have at the OG pod above us or overselling it. It's like mm. the community who's invested already knows. And if you know, yeah. you know. You're watching a McDonald's All-American gang. Of course, there's going to be McDonald's there. We're not serving any other fries that's available in Houston, Texas at this particular moment. Yeah. yeah. I think the next that's thought is, dang, they get free food? <laughs> or, you know what I mean? Like, what's going on that way? Because I did get a call from a, a alum saying, hey, since I was an alum, do I get McDonald's Yo. for free for life? <laughs> and I was like, nah, that's not how it works. But thanks for reaching out. How, how many that's years great. has it been since they were an alum that they thought they could cash in on free yeah. fries? <laughs> um, so it was Peyton Watson. Mm. So it was very yeah. soon, you know what I mean? But like, I think it was a word of mouth rumor that like, they got this like, just say that they're a McDonald's All-American and the card or something like that. Yeah, which that. does exist. It does mm -hmm. exist, but it's not given to all Americans. I think that would be cool, but I think it would that, hurt mm. McDonald's financially. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe like an annual Happy Meal. How about that? 48 every year and you get that card <laughs> and you do the math. It's a lot. Of using, of it's a lot of Happy McDonald's. Meals. That's a lot of food mm -hmm. in general. Maybe you get the limit of $50 a day. That's still a lot of food to be given away for free. Mm. I didn't hit my $50 limit. So let's go back. Then you get on a plane. I get on a plane. I come back to New York for a day. I get the chance to um, watch Frank Isola uh, host a panel um, before the Brooklyn Nets game with Albert King, John Sally, and uh, the commissioner of Gersh Park out in Brooklyn. Check that out for a brief. Went to the Nets Pacers game, um, left at halftime because I was, I had to get ready for this next. Fight. Yeah, you had a big, bigger fish yeah. to fry. Yeah, Speaking so I'm fries. like, yeah, all right, I'm packing. Make sure I got my passport. Um, I'm headed to Toronto for this live show in partnership with Soho House and Count the Dings. Um, myself and John Gervais 
head to the airport um, and fly out together. We get there super early, um, which we didn't like plan it right because we can get to the Airbnb. We couldn't check into the Airbnb until three. Mm-hmm. Um, we yeah, found it's always a, tough. You think you're yeah. doing a good thing by getting there early and you realize you can't get in. So we're walking around oh. with our stuff. We find mm-hmm. a brunch spot that's connected to a dispensary. So I think the funniest bang, bang, part bang. of all that was Jerv arguing that was about your milligrams. Idea, right? Definitely not Jerv's. What? <laughs> a dispensary <laughs> to to the... brunch spot. No, it wasn't together. It was like in the same <laughs> plaza, but it just happened to be next door. We fu- we saw that first and we went in there and Jerv's like arguing with this guy about edibles. And the guy's <laughs> like, yo, trust me, stay at 50 milligrams or whatever. And Jerv's like... Man, I take these all the time. I'm gonna take a hundred or whatever. <laughs> and I'm like, Jerv, he's the pro. He's like, yo, where are you from? So now mm-hmm. he asks, where are you from? Oh, you know? yeah. And I'm like, I'm from LA. He's from Philly. And he says, Well, that guy probably gets it because LA has a stronger strain. I'm not saying that Philly probably doesn't possess this, but not as good as Los Angeles. And I look at Jerv and I said, Jerv, listen to him. Because we got you take we got- this. We got stuff to do. We got to perform. And you're going to be cooked. Time. Well, it's not even the day we actually perform. We got a day in Toronto, but it's just like one bad edible could cook yeah. him for the whole trip. And it's like, mm-hmm. damn, we lost Jerv. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Hand down. Or hang, or some hang down what shit. happened? Brunch. Right? Brunch dispensary. Brunch yeah. dispensary. Yeah. Got all so tough we, talking to the guy. Canadian weed. Yeah. yeah. Another that would be a terrible thing. loss to lose to Canadian weed. <laughs> Trey, um, what, do, what do you think? What do you think is the uh, power rankings in that conversation? Like when someone asks, hey, where are you from? What is the area that gets the biggest laughs when they say, oh, I'm from blank? For weed? Do, or just for weed? Florida. Yeah. Florida still has really weird weed. I, I mean, treatment. I'm not I'm not such a weed connoisseur. So I can't really verse that, but I'm pretty, I'm assuming Texas maybe because they're late to the party. Yeah. Any, anywhere South, I like, any, like I it's like still illegal. That's really, I feel like any place that's really legal and they're trying really hard to get it there, they're going, their, their quality is going to be very low. And the brand name that's considered bootlegged would be, I got that Cali. Because mm-hmm. California is like, if anything, I would go Oregon, California. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I would go, say I go, I go, the top, I go Oregon the top one is Oregon, Washington State, Colorado, because those places all had legal really Colorado. Weed. Colorado, I talked to a lot of people. Denver, I, I talked to a lot of people, and I talked to a lot of people about Colorado, and they were saying it was pretty bunk. Um, but like that, they got all the hype from the decriminalization first. Yeah, so, I mean, they just they've they've had legal marijuana for longer, so like, yeah, I think even longer than than Washington State, but. Yeah. So talk to me. Talk to me about the Soho House. So love the establishment. Soho House was. Um, it reminded me of like London, right? The buildings like, like very prestige, um, like older. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It looks like yeah. like a duchess lives there, like some mm-hmm. something, right? A royalty, right? And uh, and it's different than the New York houses, right? Because I've been to a couple of them and like the first floor is like immediately quiet. Like there's a dining area where people can have their yeah. food and chill. Yeah. And then the next floor was like, it's kind of private because they had like a private event and third floor was like very small. So not really big, but like useful. Um, Shouts to Shaka. Shaka um, was the reason why we got out there. Um, he's on the board. Um, and we got a chance to get there. Uh, Waz got snapped on for like taking a picture in there. <laughs> yeah, no that's a rule you... Can't do that. So, Can't pull yeah, out no your photos. So, so that I was mean, interesting. There was big surprise. Um, mm-hmm. and yeah, like I mean, it was it was overall cool. They were super nice. We got a chance to you know go through rundown, have lunch, you know, chill. Um, and then as far as getting to the show, we had like we started kind of delayed, right? We we're supposed to start at seven. People didn't really start filling in until about seven thirty. Um, which is okay. You know what I mean? Like I really wasn't tripping off of that. Um, we ran that tab up a lot on drinks. Yeah, that's um, right. Yeah. And overall, like I think I think the biggest challenge was when we usually do live shows, we have our community, people who get the show. This was maybe four Patreons and a blind crowd. So was hosting, 
Some topics might have rubbed people wrong. Some people probably loved. We turned into like comedians. You mm. know what I mean? Like right, people, right. More on the positive side. I can honestly point out four individuals that just did not enjoy it on certain topics where it was just like, I'm on my phone, but I won't leave out of respect. Because they got they got great manners in Canada, right? Manners are great. I didn't, it was, it was someone just stuck at the light doing some bullshit and they did not honk the horn once. And I was mm-hmm. like, this was New York. They probably kicked their car. Mm-hmm. So I, I get mm-hmm. it. But fun experience. Um, always great. great to talk to people, even the intermission. We even got a chance to do like a uh, postmortem to like see how things could be better. Um, but after a five year hiatus, it felt good. I mean, obviously, I would love for the entire crew to be able to go because um, I think that takes it to another level. Um, and if and if the next cities are available, I think that it is going to be bigger. Um, but we have to find a way to get our entire community there. And if not, well. We can do it outside of said Soho house mm. and bring the, the 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 real family back. You know what I'm saying? Um, and 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 get it in. And also talk to Jade. I got a chance to talk to Jade, so that was cool too. Like right before we had the show, mm. so you know, um, super producer, super I, producer. Uh, I talked to him last week, and it was great. It was great to see him. Yeah. So I mean. If you got a chance to go to the live show for the next one, make it. Um, I still think that we are the kings of the live show, bold claim, but um, there are bigger uh, there are there are bigger platforms with bigger audiences that still can't do our numbers. It's the yeah. little Count the Dings podcast network um, doing the same numbers as the majors. The only place where you can see me with a do rag. Is that a live the show? The only place that can see you with the do rag, the only place you can meet Anthony Mays in real life, mm-hmm. the only place <laughs> you can. Uh, that's, the, that's actually number one on the bill on the. Yeah. On yes. the board. Otherwise, yeah. you might think that I'm not real. Yes. Yeah, or or he's you might think that he's a short fat dude. Um, but the at fuck? the live show, you can see that he is anything but. You can actually see it for yourself. Yeah. I remember the the Chicago live show, man, with Jay Adande. That was that was awesome. We did oh, uh, yeah. a bunch of them in the Bay, which was great. When the, when we saw that first one, where the, the line out the door and down the street around the corner, that was one of the coolest moments of my life. Period. Just seeing how people came out, you know, yeah. and supported us. So uh, next one to be determined. Um, but it sounds like. Uh, we will be doing another Soho House partnered uh, event, live show mm-hmm. with Count the Dings. I'm excited to be able to do that one um, whenever that is. I think maybe mm-hmm. LA, Chicago, New York. I think probably LA or New York. So if you want to support us at Count the Dings, we got a merch store. Uh, Maze, why don't you give a little plug on the merch store real quick? Yeah, we are just wrapping up our first limited edition runs here with the the Carl Weathers and the the Amin jump shot hoodie. But we will be doing the orange Amin jump shot hoodie. And I do have a very special Cinephobe merch that will be coming soon. It's just about done. So you can check that out at bit.ly slash all cap CTD merch. It's also in the show notes. It's on the Twitter at count the dings and we're going to be trying to roll out new limited edition thing every month or so. So keep your eyes peeled for the next one. And from the shoe store to the Soho house, count the dings live shows continue to grow. It's only a matter of time until someone hands Trey McDonald's fries. After That's right. He finishes a set. Great job, Trey. Appreciate it. There's no load management in Trey's life. He just keeps going. <laughs> All right. So we're going to do for the Patreon. Trey, you cool with explaining this whole J. Cole thing that's happening? Absolutely. My timeline is seems to be filled with this and I need to be uh, filled in on what's going on. Um, as a white dude who stopped listening to rap, I think my last album that I bought was Clips. Okay. 2003. High school? Great one to stop on. But you are from North um, Carolina, so you should know about J. Cole. You know what? Co-owner of the Charlotte Hornets, J. Cole. There's your NBA tie-in. So we're going to talk that at the Patreon at the end of the episode. We also got to talk about college hoop season. We got women's college basketball. A lot happened uh, yesterday with that. And then, of course, we got John Calipari deciding to uh, 
leave Big Blue Nation behind, and he's quitting uni- University of Kentucky Wildcats and going down to Arkansas. Meanwhile, feel like there's a lot of Bronny James stuff we need to get into as well. But first, let's talk playoffs. Playoffs real quick. Playoffs? Um, playoffs! Uh, so the Rockets, see you later. Um, the Rockets are done. And uh, Luka Doncic waved goodbye, pulled the Damian Lillard and waved goodbye to their season. Um, Luka and Kyrie combined for doing the math, 106 points yesterday. Uh, mm-hmm. They had an overtime with um, Dante Exum, hits the, the big time three to send it in an OT. Dylan Brooks was put on ice skates. And then, of course, P.J. Washington, hometown hero, hits the three, ends the, the Houston Rockets season. Uh, Lucas talks some smack to Ime Udoka. See you later, Dylan Brooks. Not making the playoffs after everything that happened with Memphis. But hats off to the, Mem- um, to the Houston Rockets. Um, there, Trey, Dallas Mavericks with Kyrie and Luka. Are you buying mm-hmm. the Mavs with Kyrie and Luka? I think they're fun. They they score a lot of fun, cool buckets in, in certain ways and are very talented in their rightful self. But I don't trust them to win at all. I think they're going to hit a roadblock in certain matchups that don't work in their favor. But um, depending on who they match up with, they can definitely get past the first round if need be. I don't have long-term success for them this season. Um, but yeah, they're, they're, yeah. they're, especially Kyrie, man. Like that dude, like I said, I always get teased here and there, and I'm like, when when focus, he's one of the best point guards ever. You know what I'm saying? Like, when he's locked in and he's playing, I think it's just so inconsistent. So it's almost a laughable take. But um, yeah, man, no one, no one is a draw. He is the closest thing to like generational talent where you're like, I can't predict what he's going to do. And certain yeah. players just like I can predict what he's going to do. Like he's going to get you an elbow jumper. He's going to get to the rack a few times. He's going to pass it. That dude, you're watching it and you're just like amazed because he can just change directions. He can lay up a certain way. He might even, he has the most dunks he's ever had in his career this season, which is mm. kind of strange. He's turning back the hands of time. And yeah, I, I don't know. Lob but, City, Lob City, yeah. Dallas. Ever mm-hmm. since uh, they made that trade with Gafford and PJ Washington, uh, they've been one of the most uh, fun teams to watch. And mm-hmm. Luca with the lobs and then Kyrie with his bag. Kyrie, since he came back from his mm-hmm. injury, Listen to these numbers. Okay. So he's not eligible for all NBA because he missed a whole bunch of time this year. But since he came back in beginning of February, right before the all-star break, he's averaging 26 points, 4.9 assists, 4.9 rebounds. His shooting percentage is 51% from the floor, 41% from three and 92% from the free throw line. He is in the 50, 40, 90 club. If we're looking at that, um, that stretch there, he is right now at 496 for the season. So if he made two extra buckets, mm-hmm. two rolled off the rim that actually rolled into the rim, he'd probably be in the 50, 40, 90 club. I think for the second time in his career. So uh, Kyrie and, and Luca, I like that trade for them. I think they need more defense in order to be taken seriously. I have him as a, a two-star title contender on TomTheFinder.com. Um, at my five-star level, I've got Boston, I've got OKC, and I've got Denver. And I downgraded. This is straight for the uh, OG pod listeners. Thank you for listening. I downgraded Milwaukee. I had them at five five stars, Trey. Mm-hmm. I can't do it anymore. They're having these team meetings. I know it's team, teams have team meetings and we never hear about it. But I feel mm-hmm. like when they get leaked to the media, that's a sign that things aren't great. Like Teams do have film sessions that we never hear about. But if it gets to a certain level that either someone's purposely leaking it to the press or that, A, it got so bad in here that it's going to get out. Um, Eric Name and uh, and Shams Tarani reporting for The Athletic that it was uh, an airing of grievances session after I think it was Saturday uh, going into the Knicks game. And then, of course, Chris Middleton is knocked out of the game. Literally, his tooth knocked out. Um, and the uh, second quarter mouth trauma is what they listed it as mouth trauma. Yeah. <laughs> as someone who's gotten 14 stitches in his mouth, uh, before cause of mouth trauma, I, I, I kept my teeth intact, thankfully, but Chris Middleton had to go right to the hospital to get that straightened out. So, uh, hope he's back because I really think that this Bucks team, 
They've had six games with those three, with the big three, Chris Middleton, Damian Lillard, and Giannis. If they're either of those guys aren't ready, they're done. I think it's going to be one, two, three Cancun for Doc Rivers. Not for, as him as a head coach, but I think they're like, hey, this wasn't our season. We were trying to do things on the fly. Mm-hmm. It's not going to be this year. Next year is when it's going to be. But look, Giannis doesn't seem like he's totally thrilled. He said after the game yesterday that we're, we're not playing with joy. He's like, we're not playing with... When was the last time I like got excited after a dunk or that uh, Pat Connaughton was doing his three-point celebration? What mm-hmm. he's basically saying is, this is miserable out here. And Dame has said similar things, which is, I moved basically by myself away from my family in Milwaukee, and this hasn't been fun, but I'm trying to win a championship. Trey, you buying the Milwaukee Bucks or are you selling the Milwaukee Bucks? Selling. I've been selling. I knew that wasn't the type of thing. Like, I mean, come on, man. Like, I like Damian Lillard, legend, Portland Trailblazers all time. He is Mr. Blazer, um, despite what Clyde did. And I'm not no, no Clyde Drexler erasure. Clyde Drexler was great. Um, but he's earned it. I just think that this late in your career and how he handled things and how petty Portland was to send him to Milwaukee. And he bit off more than he can choose saying if he could play with anybody, he would play with Giannis. Well, you got your wish. And it hasn't been as great. And you're older than mostly everybody. You're actually the OG. You're the vet. You look around, you're the vet. You're with the young guys. There's a disconnect there. You know, Giannis is doing his thing. Doc Rivers is doing his thing. Doing his and, thing, which is calling out the equipment managers, essentially, and the towel boys. Like, Yeah, hey. I mean, I, I, think, I think Doc doesn't really want to coach anymore. I think he's, <laughs> he's in this scenario. He, he wasn't never, coaching. He never tried to hide from this. He's been saying that this was a terrible idea since before <laughs> they hired him. And as we make fun of him with on the Zazi pod, it's like, yes, oh God, I guess I'll take the $4 million, twist my arm. I mean, because why not? I mean, at the end of the day, it's like, sure. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, why not? You don't turn down Making free money no matter how bad not it is. Him. Yeah, it was like, all right, bro, like, cool. I tried to tell you. Why don't you, why don't you get an opportunity to raise your win, your winning record, right? And why don't you get an opportunity to coach two Hall of Famers? Yeah, to add to your pedigree of like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we're uh, looking. They still still got to go out there and play at the end of the day. They were looking how much you want to blame Doc or not. Solid in the two seed which could have been a matchup with, you know, Philly or Miami, but now they lost four straight. They're only one and a half games ahead of Cleveland. Who's in the five seed. Like yeah, be a lot of movement. Is it really that bad? Like, is that bad that you're playing Cleveland as opposed to my, I'd rather play Cleveland than Miami or Philly. So like this slide that he's doing, I'm keeping my third eye open. Okay. I'm keeping my third. I think Chris Middleton kind of leaned into it. You know? No, Tom, he had mouth trauma. Okay. It's- Psychological uh, yeah. effects of that down the line with his mouth. True. With his mouth. Yeah. And, and look, I think when we're talking about, I, I, I got a chance to cover the Celtics game last night, which by the way, what a dream. I love the officials, the referees. You know how I, I broke that story about how they're like, the games are quicker. There's fewer fouls in the NBA. Mm-hmm. That game started at six fifteen and ended at eight. Wow. Which there brings me to my next segment here. I'm not watching the NCAA men's final. I'm not. Too late. Too late. Too late at night. Trey. <laughs> Trey, as a father, as a basketball f- fan, as just a human being, okay? Shouts to the women's side for having their final at 3 o'clock, Okay. Cause I could watch outside on my back deck. It was a great, you know, little afternoon with my girls watching the game. And I didn't have to worry about going to bed at, at midnight. You know, the good thing Tonight is the they, game is at nine 20. What are we doing? To, they didn't have to compete with the NBA. Like they, they knew their audience, right? You get out of church, whatever. However, three is a perfect time. Eastern wise, the West coast still has their day back at noon. Right. In this particular situation, you can't go early for the Eastern Standard because people are at work. Mm-hmm. And the sponsors and how it's ran. And it's on the West Coast. It's in Phoenix. 
So yeah. it's technically a 720 tip. Yeah, I'm not in. I'm not in either. I, I'll find out I who won in the morning. I can't. We're, we're maze. I'm I, I, I'm jealous of you right now, but also like I feel like it's a learning lesson for the men's men's side and just the NBA with the finals. They've already rolled it back like a half hour, whatever it was. In also, the finals. stop playing these games on fucking on Monday. Mondays. That's what I was gonna yeah. say. They own Let's Monday, go Saturday, Sunday. It's Let's been put the Monday women on Saturday. Long time and it doesn't necessarily yeah. make sense. Like Rough. you're saying, Tom. You know, like why why can't we have the women's game and the men's game back to back on a Sunday and they just build it out and you know, the championships go back to back. That seems like mm-hmm. a very doable thing. There's another reason I'm not going to watch this. Zach Eady. He reminds me too much yeah. of myself playing against undersized people in high school. Cause that man is a seven foot four Anthony Mays. I watched him drop 40 on a variety of, of baby hooks and drop steps. And it took me back to a time when I was bigger and stronger than the six foot one person who was assigned to guard me. And it's just not fun for anybody to watch the big man punish a smaller guy and be big little jump hooks, baby hooks. Yeah. It's not fun. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Zach. I know I should be representing for you as a fellow tall man, but Gilbert Arenas went out, you know, on his pod and said, like, whoever drafts this guy in the lottery is picking an all time bust. Is he going in the lottery or is it a Baycott situation where it's like, yeah, you can dominate college hoops, but we're good? No, I don't think he's going that high. Um, But I will say I'm rooting for ED, man. ED got it rough. Can't get NIL money because he's a Canadian. Um, Wait, what? Yeah. You got it. That's a rule? Yeah, man. It's, It's just like applying for a job, bro. Need a work visa. Gotta get, that visa. Gotta get that work visa. Even as a student athlete. So no NILs for no Canadian players. Are any of his relatives or managers having a, a I don't know. A little, what, what are you alleging, Tom? I I, I just feel like uh, they could be creative with this. I don't know. I'm maybe as, I know maybe right, his as of right uncle now opened up a brunch yeah. slash dispensary spot. It, you know, does he know. have an American uncle, American born uncle? Do we know? As of right now, I feel like there should be some work around and something to work towards it because Toby um, Fournier is headed to Duke. Um, if you're not familiar, she should have been playing in McDag, but she didn't because she's Canadian and she goes to high school in Canada. She's 6'4". She can go between her legs. She can dunk with two hands off the dribble. She can do step back. She can shoot the three. She can jab. She can reverse pivot. She can do those little dump-ins that Mays talked about. And it's going to be a shock to non-grassroot fans who have never seen her play before. So, mm. um, But she won't be able to get an NIL as well because she's Canadian. All international mm. players, you don't eat. You got to live like a regular student. Can can they eat McDonald's fries if you walked in front of her? And no, they actually might get in trouble by me. <laughs> yeah, because that's a that's a um, impermissible benefit or something like yes. that. Yes. What if they're cold fries? Hmm? No, no fries at all. Unfortunate. Okay. But yes, I'm rooting for you kind of go back to back. Shout out to McDonald's All American Stephen Castle. Rooting for you, brother. Yeah, Tom, yeah. are your are your New England roots excited by this UConn run, the Dan Hurley experience that's been happening? Yeah, you know, um, a bunch of my friends from back home are super pumped. Um, I'm just kind of hung up by the whole Hurley thing as a as an ACC guy. Mm. Just the Hurley name Triggering. messes me up. Even though they're like the most powerful basketball coach family right up there with the Van Gundy's and who else am I uh, the Patinos uh but the Hurley family uh I I don't know there's a there's there's part of me that's rooting for Purdue tonight because I want mass chaos when it comes to John Calipari I want mass chaos if Calipari leaves Kentucky to go to Arkansas and then Dan Hurley does he does he say you know what I've done my thing at UConn I'm taking my talents to Lexington, Kentucky. That's that's what I'm going to be waking up extra early, not watching for. I'm not going to watch it, watch to find out if Dan Hoey is going to come back to UConn. Mm-hmm. But Kentucky, 
Keep my third eye open on this one, guys. Right before the national championship, Calipari decides I'm going to Arkansas. Huh. What would cause him to make that decision right now, right before the national championship? I'm just saying. I'm just saying. The dots are out there. People are saying Nate Oates. Some people are saying the dude from uh, uh, Scott Drew from Baylor. Maybe. Maybe we find out before, and this is all just a, a, a mad conspiracy theory because mm-hmm. I watched one YouTube video. <laughs> I watched you one watched YouTube. a video on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so I, like, I, got, I, like, I, a, I like Nate Oates to UK, though. Mm. I got a question for Trey. What about what Rick? Is- Rick Patino coming no. back? Rick, Rick's on fire. What right about now. Richard Patino? Isn't that his son's name? He's, Maybe he's, the under fi- he's under fire right now for some NIL stuff. So uh, when when you when win is he not under fire? Let's be honest. When it, yeah titles yeah. at UConn, why would you leave? That's my question for Trey. Like, is it is the appeal of UK really that much bigger? Is the money that much better? Absolutely. Hell yeah. Same way. Uh, stores Connecticut. Yeah. Yeah. I, that's what I, that's what is amazing to me is when like stores Connecticut and Syracuse become basketball powerhouses. I just I, I I don't know how they do it. The winner, come on, come on. I mean, Lexington, Kentucky, is that exciting? Uh, have you is. been to Bourbon Country? And also, yeah. have you seen the boosters? Is that Ashley Rudd and them all them? You've been to the Kentucky Derby before, Mace? Yeah, I've not. But yeah, what about what about you get a you get a seat next to Michael Jordan at at the Derby? How about that, bro? That big blue shit is tough. You feel me? Like that's mm. that's a whole different beast in itself. My Some wife people... roots for Kentucky over Wake. When Wake played Kentucky in the NCAA tournament, John Wall back in like ten years ago or whatever it was, she was rooting for Kentucky. She went to Kentucky. She went to Wake Forest. That's how we met. <laughs> that's where we oh. met. And she's rooting for Kentucky. I'm like, bro, like, come on. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> this is our school. My whole, my whole. Yeah, the, I guess I'm just, not drinking the blue Kool Aid. All right, I'm, I'm I'm too far outside the the Kentucky bubble to to appreciate okay. its impact. But if it's Big if blue it nation. still does have the appeal, I mean, I just you know I I see I see back to back championships at UConn on the table, and I'm like, seems like it's going pretty good over here. But if you can if you can pick up and you can take your recruits and you can get a couple transfers and all that. And speaking of transfers, yeah, let's talk about it. Bronny James is now entered into the protocol as a Friday, the transfer protocol, but also eligible, made himself eligible for the draft. He declared for the NBA draft while keeping his options open, according to his Instagram account. And Bronny James is basically a free agent in every respect. Mm-hmm. Yeah, He's keeping his options open. Transfer to the Lakers? Is that in play? Does the portal extend into yeah. the NBA somehow? How does that work? He's an American, so at least he doesn't have to worry about that. Yeah. Yeah, is there a portal from the USC campus to Staples Center? Sorry, crypto? How does that work, Trey? As a as a uh LA native yourself, how does is there a portal that we don't know about that only Clutch knows about? Like the tunnels no. to the Clippers locker room? Is there also a tunnel to Trojan country? He's, he is transferring out. Okay. So he's done. The coach is done. And now here comes Eric Musselman from, um, love that hire, by the way, Arkansas. Okay. Trey's, Trey's stamping with approval. Um, but Bronny's not, he's keeping his options open. He's, uh, entered into the transfer protocol. And according to ESPN, Bronny James is on very high on the prominent list I love the wording here, uh, ESPN saying, if Bronny James decides to return to college and transfer elsewhere. Okay, that's caveat one, okay? It would be his decision. It wouldn't be that he's not going to get drafted. It'd be that he chose not to go. Exactly. Uh, It reminds me of being in sixth grade, and I I broke up with uh, Beth Schnapp, and I... Shout out to Beth Schnapp. What a poll. I know. Beth Beth is a... uh, She was... Amazing, but I heard she was going to break up with me. So guess what I did? I went and because I got word him. from Brittany. Brittany told me Brittany Benet. Shouts to Brittany Benet. <laughs> Brittany told me in the hallway in sixth grade at Coley Middle, uh, Bedford Middle. What if she lied? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yo, that'd be bad. Everything's different, Trey. 
The whole world <laughs> is upside Spider-Man down. Spider-Man universe. Brittany was sabotaged. <laughs> Brittany was like, hey, uh, I don't like this Tom Haverstroke character, so I'm going to tell him that Beth is going to break up with you, so you go over there and break up with her, and then it's over. Uh, so I broke up with her, so I could have the power in there and be like, oh, we broke up. Um, what Bronny is doing is he's deciding whether he's going to stay in college. Um, it's his call. And here's the report. Bronny James, Duquesne is expected, expected, okay? He, Duquesne is expected to be among his prominent considerations. All right. There's, if he decides to stay in school, okay, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Duquesne is expected, that's not a, a report, it's just expected to be among, not the top one, but among his prominent considerations, sources said. Why Duquesne, Trey? I can't, what is, what's Duquesne? Drew Why Joyce. would Bronny? Oh, Drew Joyce. Who's Drew Joyce? That's um, that's uh, one of the hot coaching candidates in, in America, right? For college development or NBA development? No. Who's Drew Joyce? Drew Joyce <laughs> is LeBron's former high school teammate and point guard. That's right. That's right. There it is. Okay. Wait, who's he replacing? Is he a new coach for Duquesne? No, he is replacing LeBron's first high school coach. Mm. St. Vincent, St. Mary. Wow. Wow. Putting two together, two and two equals four or equals six. Wow. So Bronny James is declared for the NBA draft, Mm -hmm. but he's also expected to list Duquesne among his preferred considerations, Mm -hmm. prominent considerations, excuse me. Um, And LeBron's teammate, Drew Joyce, is going to be the head coach there. Uh, taking mm-hmm. over for LeBron's former coach, uh, Keith Dambro. Who also so, was a guest at the Lakers practice facility a couple of days ago. But there's no portal that we know about. Uh, no portal. The Lakers. No portal. Okay. no portal to the Lakers. All right. So now a lot of people know that Drew Joyce is taking over for Duquesne. Um, and he's got a top prospect who just declared for the NBA draft, who is going to be seriously considering um, going there. So Bronny James right now, I probably would suspect he's a second round prospect at at best. Um, There's all sorts of scouts and NBA executives that have weighed in and said, Hey, you should go back to school. It's his choice. And um, according to clutch CEO, um, Rich Paul is that, LeBron wants Bronny to be his own person. So it doesn't have to be a case where I go to the Minnesota Timberwolves and then the Timberwolves come and they get LeBron. It's not going to be a package deal. Bronny is his own person. So it, it, where LeBron is, it doesn't matter. What's important is that he has the right developmental track. Um, doesn't need to be a lottery pick. Woo! So... That must be nice, man. I mean, I'm I'm looking at four points, four point eight a game, two point three, no, two point eight rebounds, two point one assists on thirty six um, percent shooting. But history shows that players have been drafted for less. Um, Tom, I could have tipped you off on this earlier, but someone was drafted in the first round, three point three points, two point nine rebounds. Who was this player? Um. It's probably Zach Eady. No, it's not Zach Eady. No, current Ackles. I know. Um, um, I current him earlier, Ack- actually. Uh, Peyton Watson. Peyton Watson. Mm. Peyton Watson was drafted, averaging three points and a game. And what's he doing now, Trey? What's he doing now? Contributing to a... He's a champion. You know what I mean? So there's not too far off. Guys are saying that. Ronnie is an NBA player, maybe not a killer, but he is an NBA player. Smart, can make the shot, can defend, et cetera. Don't rule him out off his college stats. Some people mm-hmm. aren't meant for the college game. Maybe Bronny James might be that. Another person drafted in the lottery as a promise. 1.5 points, 1.7 rebounds. Mm. Drafted to the Kings. Um, what's, the, what's my man name? Papa what? Papa Nicolau? Papa Giannis. Yes. Costas Papa Nicolau? Yes. He was a favor. So, another player drafted in the second round. 6.3, 4.2 rebounds. Uh, it seems like 
we need to bring you know, this segment. Trey did his own research. It's true. He did. I mean, so as much as I wanted to hate on Bronny's numbers, there is a possibility to make it to the NBA with less. I mean, are we looking yeah. at a glorified Shabazz Napier situation? <sighs> well, but Shabazz, he's, he's sending I think, the opposite. I think Napier had a different game. I think I think he's Tim Hardaway Jr. Sailing walks. Okay. And that's not a bad Tim Hardaway. That's a great a lot of, for a guy. He made a lot of money in this league so far and is contributing. I wasn't talking about comparing his game to Shabazz Napier. I'm talking about how LeBron oh, go, heavily oh, suggested yeah. that Shabazz Napier get picked. And he's apparently he's saying he wants the opposite in this situation. But yeah, he's his own guy. He's how do you feel about person. the prospect of someone like the Spurs picking him in the second round as as LeBron bait? Ooh, that'd be fun. Is that enough to get him drafted or will he be at Duquesne next year? Hmm. I mean, I'm rooting for Duquesne because I actually want to see more of his development and his star grow on a on a team where he could grow and become the player he needs to be. I feel like everything's been rushed the last five years. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I it, I still think he can be an NBA player, and he's super young. Like it's not on like, his own. I feel like it can be earned on his mm-hmm. own, his own yeah. sweat equity in a situation of like, damn, yo, Bronny, he got it together. You know what I'm saying? Versus. All right, because even with the McDonald's All American game, like people were still like, how did he become like in the top twenty four to be selected? He finished twenty six best player in 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 California. I mean, in the United States, and he finished fifteen points per game. I mean, fifteen points in the All Star game in the McDonald's All American game. He plays the game the right way. His style is perfect because he can pass the ball, relocate, knock down the shot with other talent. So I still don't even, I'm still not crazy about Duquesne. I'm crazy about like, yo, go to Duke and you could just pass it to Cooper Flagg. You could pass it to Slim Evans. You could defend and be a star in your role and go league. You know what I mean? So you're saying not Duquesne. You're saying Duke. Yeah, go to Duke because Duquesne is like, all right, you got to focus the attention. Like whoever go to Duquesne and they're their best player, just pass the keys because you no longer the best player. You... You know, in that situation. This is the S dot. This is this is the the Seth Curry plan is go to Liberty mm-hmm. for a year, transfer mm-hmm. over to Duke, then make it to the league. Coaches, uh, not coach's son, uh, NBA player's son, second generation. Mm-hmm. Just saying. What about another one? Guy named uh Jalen Brunson, first yep. year at Villanova. What do he do? Nine points, three assists as a freshman. And then became the college player of the year a couple years later. People yep. thought he was too small. Yep. Couldn't make it. Then he became a second round pick. And now look at him. So I'm just saying, let's not write off Bronny off just yet. The thing I think people are, the reason why it's a story is because LeBron wanted him to be like, he pumped up Bronny James and then walked it all back, walked mm-hmm. it all back. And so well, the timeline is coming from the fact that his dad is pushing 20 plus years in the league and would like to play at the same time as him. Yeah. Like, there's no harm in Bronny taking, you know, being a sophomore or a junior yeah. and developing mm-hmm. his game and then coming out to the draft. Like, that's perfectly reasonable. But because his dad is like literally in a back and forth bout with Father Time. That's why this pressure is there. So we want yeah. good things for Bronny, whatever he ends up deciding, because it will be his choice no matter what. Right. Totally. His own life. Let's go to the Patreon. Trey, here's what I know. Um, there was a diss track involved with uh, Kendrick Lamar mm-hmm. and J. Cole. Mm-hmm. Uh, are, were they cool before this? Now they're not cool. How does this compare to Biggie and Tupac? Like, Give me some framing that I can understand what this beef is about. They're friends, but they're competitors, right? And in a scenario, you know, they've been sitting, Drake, Kendrick Lamar, and J. Cole have been sitting at the top collectively as the best rappers for a very long time, a good Mm -hmm. eight to 10 years now at this point, right? And it reminds me of the big, you know, when the free agency happened before LeBron joined the Heat. And, you know, like I felt like, they were respective in these scenarios. And then like J. Cole and Drake teamed up. 
to do this tour and you know, all the buddy buddy stuff. And still they decided to take shots at Kendrick, like, uh, eh, maybe I'm two or maybe I'm one, but like you're not one, right? And in a particular situation, Kendrick does a feature song on Future's track called Like That, where he addresses some of the comments that have been on recent tracks in the past year or so, right? Year or two. And he's like, all right, well, you know, y'all teaming up. Y'all ain't no big three. It's just big me. Like, mm. rap is about competition. There's no violence in this. This is, we're, we're beyond... Rap is a very violent job, right? It's, it's one of those scenarios. But in these particular conscious rappers, very commercial with brands, nothing's going to happen between these three. It is lyrical, friendly, warfare competition, right? Yeah, it's, and, it's Devin Booker pushing, uh, what's his face, uh, Dyson Daniels, where they're not really going to fight. But Yeah, they're not going to fight. So Kendrick does his verse. It yeah. wakes the game up. Everybody's on notice. J. Cole Ooh. responds with a surprise mixtape project, mm. some songs, with two diss. And the diss were respected. People liked it. Could have felt like he could have went harder. And everybody's like, yo, Kendrick, you're on the clock now. You got to respond. Yet mm. Drake has yet to respond to this verse that Kendrick has, right? So J. Cole has this festival, Dream, Dreamville. Yeah. In Carolina. And towards the end of his set, before he performs, he says, as much as he wants to be a competitor for the game and understand that it didn't sit right with his soul. You know what I mean? Him taking shots at his friend, it didn't feel real. It was very fake and performative. As a 39-year-old who, <laughs> you know, because he's 39. He's, a, he's, our, he's, a, he's our age group, right? Yep. He is questioning, should he have to play up to this? Now, rap culture is always like, yo, it's just battle. It's not that deep. Nobody's going to die. Do this. But the journey and the path that he's on, he's just like, I've been at peace for 10 years of being comfortable in my own skin, whether I'm the best. If I think I'm the best, I think I'm the best, but not to no one else's discernment. Now, he says, people at were Dreamville. calling. Yeah. At Dreamville, he in says this to the crowd. His, all his fans, his devoted <sighs> fans that spent this money, right? And Amin and Waz are very close to this camp. So they're like, yeah, boy, you heard it, blah, blah, blah. So I, they were even disappointed last night just because it was such a shock of like, he's saying he literally lost two days of sleep because it didn't sound real. He discounted he like this it. man's yeah. discography. This man knows he respects this man as a peer. And it just did not seem real to him. He's like, if this is the version of me that I have to do to climb, cool. Now, me as a fan, selfishly, I'm like, ah, oh, that's whack. That's yeah. whack. You got to rap. But another side of me is like, how can I tell him how he wants to be at peace and how he should go about it? So I'm in a tug of war of like, I see where you're coming from and you weren't in the right space and people talked you out of your position to respond to this. Even well, though you, you did throw the first shot. You threw the first shot on first person shooter. Okay. So he he is the he's the one who initiated this. Along so with if we want to talk about but along, they, with Drake. along with Drake. Him and Drake had a song together. Drake, Drake single, is yeah. not apologizing and Drake does not feel like he's lost. But also Drake has yet to respond. So everyone's waiting to see if someone bows out, if Drake's gonna get disrespectful, because Drake takes the petty route. But the petty route towards normally older rappers or rappers under him or rappers least successful usually works in his favor of him can be funny and like buy things or try to humiliate the, 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 the competitor. In this situation, Kendrick has the Grammys. Kendrick has the sellout, has the numbers. You know what I mean? And 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 Kendrick's calling himself Prince and Michael Jackson and uh Drake's calling himself Michael Jackson. But the story of it is that Kendrick's like, I play my own instruments. I do this, I do that. I am like, I don't write, I don't have talented. a ghostwriter. Yeah. Yeah. I really yeah. do this. You are a song making machine. Michael Jackson had Barry Gordy and the Invisible Man early on in his career. And then he branched out and learned how to do it on his own, which Drake can make any song. He can make a song you can play with your kids, your grandma, you, you know, you can play in Target, as most Def said, respectfully. He is a world-renowned artist and just not a rapper in one box. He can make Spanish music. He could make probably Russian music right. if he wanted to. 
Um, but he has to rap if he wants to be considered with the likes of AJZ or a likes of the ones that have done it in a respectful mm. manner early on in the nineties, the biggies, the Tupacs, the, you know, the et cetera. And he can't go disrespectful because he can, but it's going to there. Drake has too many Explosive. public. Yeah. He has too many public things to attack. He went blackface in the year 2005 or something like that. Like, yeah, yeah. Push, Pusha exposed like, all these. And, and Pusha did this. And Pusha's not even at the level of a Kendrick Lamar. Mm -hmm. So, like, thinking that you stabbed somebody and showed that he could bleed is the worst thing that could potentially happen with someone that's eye level. You really have to rap and you have to do your research and you have to be very strategic. You know what I mean? Like, mm, yeah. in, order, in order for rap fans to be like, oh, Drake really got him on this. He's going to have to be very surgical with his knife and pen. So, so what what J. Cole did effectively was to he pulled the fire alarm and the party needs to die down. Yes. Everyone's gotta leave. This is this yeah. we're not doing this anymore. Yeah. And I feel like that took a lot of soul searching for him to understand his own feelings about this whole thing. But also mm -hmm. everyone's kind of bummed, like, yo. This, this was could really hurt, cool. This could hurt him. That's the type of falling on a sword that could potentially happen. He has another album coming out called The Fall Off. And it's like, is it the irony mm -hmm. of like, did you just fall off? Canceling, removing your own diss. You yeah. know what I mean? How you, I've ne we've never yep. in, in ever in this potential situation said, dang, someone say, and streaming removes permanence. Like, we're not buying physical cap. Mm. You literally can say, ah, oh, I didn't mean to say that. So, like, can you take that off? Well, yep. this is the problem. When you when you come out and apologize or at least try to pull back and say, like, look, that's not my, that's not me. Yeah, I took, that's, it, I took that's, it too far, yeah. Then every song he does after that, you're going to wonder in the back of your head, is he going to retract this? Is this really him? Because there's a, a moment of authenticity that, like, when he comes out with a diss track and he goes at Kendrick, it feels like, ooh, Mm -hmm. J. Cole said that. Oh, that's him. Yeah. yeah. But now that he's saying that's not me, and he I got another album coming out. Is this all yeah. gonna be an act again? So that's like the whole professional wrestling aspect of it is like we're all under this pretense that this is authentic J. Cole, or this is authentic Michael Jackson, or whoever it is. this is you. This is you, right? Yeah. This isn't your ghostwriter, this isn't a copywriter, this is you. And as soon yeah. as you pull back the curtain, be like, hey, my guys convinced me I needed to do a diss track. Uh I didn't really feel it, but I did it. And now I just feel terrible. It, uh, there's this whole masculinity thing that is playing into this too, is this idea that someone stepped to you, you got to step up and fight back like a real man. The problem with that narrative is that J. Cole, apparently, as I'm learning right now, is the one who swung first with Drake. And now he wants to be like, hey, this fight's over. I'm, I'm done. So he's saying the fight's over and we're done. Or at least he's he's pulling himself out and saying, my bad, Kendrick. I love you, my guy. Right? Well, Kendrick definitely won. <laughs> I yeah, I mean, at this win. point, I, I do think it's a win. And I do think that the next step is how, you know, because they're already the camp that's associated with Kendrick is putting out, uh, what is it, the one? Too late to apologize. Mm -hmm. They're like subliminally putting that video out. I even joined in on the fun because it is too late. You can't just say, oh, every such and such, every four years, my album is good. Like, or that my mm. whole discography is voided or that, oh, you got to do me a certain way. And like, you're, you know, like if you keep trying me, I'm this. And it's like, stick to it. It's just rap. It's just rap, bro. It's, it's just rap. Nobody, rap beats nobody's gonna are take supposed to be than. enjoyable for the listener, right? Like it's yes. not supposed to take things too serious. Especially knowing point. that, especially knowing who the artist is. Mm -hmm. No criminal record on both of these two. Yeah. No ill will. They both have endorsements. They don't have any camp saying, let me get to them. It's not even that. They're just rapping. So they could they could do this and say, all right, that was a good jab. All right, I'm coming out second round. And they can go back and forth until they say, all right, you won or you got me. And I couldn't really bounce back from that. But instead, he was just like, I don't really want to play this game. Mm -hmm. I took the bait. I started it. 
and now I got my chin out if you decide to respond. Yeah, and I it's saw you say, like, literally said my and chin it, out. And it's also, man, it's also good psychology warfare, psychological warfare for J. Cole to say this because Kendrick is constantly in at war with himself. Mm-hmm. Where he'll be like, he'll make a record that's very spicy and then be like, yo, you shouldn't drink <laughs> or you shouldn't gangbang. Yeah. Well, yeah, that, like, or, Kendrick has all the voices and like the characters. So it's like, I feel like it's really easy for Kendrick to just speak in that one voice and do mm, battle rap. Whereas like J. Cole theory, is kind of more consistent. My theory is Kendrick mm-hmm. Lamar's whole uh, career is borderline personality disorder. Yeah. I mean, on his albums, it definitely sounds like it. On certain ones of them, he's talking to himself. He's arguing with himself. You know, mm-hmm. open your mind up and listen to me, Kendrick. Like <laughs> that's always in there. He's hearing it. So the alien voice is one. Yep. The other guy is one. The one that actually wants to always get in trouble. The one that's like the voice of reason. Mm-hmm. His stuff is like deep all the time. Yeah. Like you know, he's he's taking he the first album is obviously everyone's favorite because it's commercialized and it ta- mm-hmm. it's it's the music that everybody wants. But as he's growing, he's seeing the industry of like, I'm really not enjoying this shit that's going on. And like, I have a bigger responsibility because if I, especially as an L.A. rapper, mostly L.A. rappers, if they are promoting violence, is a soundtrack to death in streets. Mm-hmm. Yeah, We take it more literal than anybody potentially could take it. So for him to go to Pimp a Butterfly and, and, and champion blackness and stopping gangs and stuff, nobody wanted to hear it from a worldwide base, but it was a deeper song message in it. Damn, it's soul searching. A whole nother thing. This last one, the uh, you know, the uh, Mr. Morale and the, the Steppers is about openly going to therapy and, and discussing like trauma of like, you know, seeing his auntie becoming a like a man, like trans, you know what I mean? Transgender and accepting it and trying to understand it from a community, but also addressing cancel culture head on. Like, all right, y'all cancel the rapper, so I'm going to feature him and let y'all know and make y'all look at him as a human instead of how yeah. y'all trying to cancel him. Like, he thinks, he he, ta- he takes a lot of risks that could hurt him more than it can help him. Yeah, because he's on not as albums. focused on commercial success and he's achieved it yeah. anyways. Like, he did the he, Black Panther soundtrack it. and that was yeah. massive. Like, he, but yeah, I, I've always been Team Kendrick over Team J. Cole. So this is a this is an easy one for me to pick my side. Hopefully I dumped it down. But I'm I like all three artists, to be honest. Like yeah, I'm I think I'm, there's a Drake I'm phone, in North Carolina, obviously. So I'm <laughs> geographically aligned with J. Cole. Yeah. Um that's why but, we uh that's why you're gonna lose sleep tonight, Tom. Mm, already have. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because of the yeah. Blazers. I'm game. gonna stick my chin out. Mm-hmm. The Blazers games being up all night. That's It'd be right on the canvas. <laughs> <laughs> all the last night was amazing. Eight o'clock. <laughs> the game was over in an hour and forty five minutes. <laughs> so good. Jason Tatum was like, "Yeah, I'm done. I'm out. I'm good." Oh my god. All right. Appreciate y'all. Thank you for listening. And go check out the merch store. Go listen to Pack Your Knives. We're in the middle of season twenty one of Top Chef, and shit is getting crazy on the show. And we just got. Basically, a genius Top Chef listener uh, joined the show, Mad Scientist, and she breaks it all down. So go listen to Pack Your Knives. Thank you for listening to this edition of the OG Pod Coming Home podcast. Thank you to Trey. Thank you to producer Anthony Mays. Shouts to the super producer, Jade Hoy. Trey, great job this week. Uh, Great job as always. Go listen to Bomb. And we got some new merch, Bomb merch. Go pick it up.